Yeah, and it's also interesting at the start you talked about Emmy being multifactorial. Yeah. And there's an interesting correlation from what it sounds like between the mitochondria and the adrenals because you've got two different energy systems there. You've got your, yeah. kind of, your kind of standard energy and you've got your stress and your reserve energy. And maybe it's worth just briefly explaining the relationship there because that kind of shows how the different systems get affected. You know, if you're running out of your ATP energy, you're going to use your adrenals. Yes, and- yeah. So when the mitochondria are down um, or under functioning we do see patients start to live off their adrenal energy so then they're living off nervous energy as well and um, that can keep them going for a while but then eventually the adrenals will probably get um, go into an under functioning state and crash as well because obviously that you know the body all parts of the body needs to work together um, and it's when there's an overstress of one area that there will be um, that different areas will crash, and then then we need to not just sort out the mitochondria, but then we've got the adrenals to sort out as well. So, um, yeah, everything's interconnected, and uh, it's that's why it can be quite a complex thing. I mean, for example, with the mitochondria, um, it's there is certain toxicity that can um, cause that problem. That can be linked to periods of stress that are allowing toxins to build up in the body. Then once the mitochondria are under functioning, it's not just that direct explanation about the delayed fatigue and somebody unplugging the system. There's secondary damage, if you like, that occurs from low functioning mitochondria, so that, which compounds all the other symptoms. So now the energy production is not working so well. Well, is, is the digestion going to work so well when the mitochondria are under functioning? Will the liver detoxify as well as it should be? Will patients be able to think straight? Um, there's, there's most of the mitochondria are actually found in huge amounts in the heart, for example. So that there's a lot of very interesting research being done on the on the heart and and ME patients as well in that area. And if you have you know the heart is is sub functioning now you've got circulations not getting around the body. You know, cold hands and feet, poor circulation, that's going to cause fatigue in itself. So so each system that goes out can have a compounding effect on everything else, even though it wasn't the the um, the primary cause. It's ME is more of a, uh, a process of things all interacting with each other, and affecting, and then a feedback system one affecting the other. So that's what I'm trying to explain about. It's not just a single one shot cure. It's not gonna, not gonna work. <laughs> and and with the mitochondria being affected that way, you talked about patients understanding what's happening, so they can they can rest a bit more. But in terms of actual treatment, what what are some of the things you can do to treat that? Yeah, um, there are there, there are, for each different system and area there are definitely um, treatment plans using um, dietary changes and uh, usually nutri- different types of nutritional supplements. Sometimes herbs. We're a clinic which we don't use drug drugs, and um, so there's there are you know we're not against using drug therapy. Although a lot of ME patients can have reactions to drugs and don't get on with them, so prefer a natural approach. So we will be using we use certain. Um, vitamins and mineral supplementation, superfoods that we use a lot as well. Um, You know, it's so important just to get the basics right. Um, You know, nutrition is really, it's fats, carbohydrates, protein, vitamins and minerals, and you've got to get all the basics in there right from the beginning. Check that, is the patient absorbing those things? Are they absorbing fats, proteins uh, and carbohydrates? What's their vitamin and mineral status? And that is step, literally step one. And literally we'll do, we'll look at uh, one of the things we do every patient that comes into the clinic, we will get them to do about standard 10 to 11 tests they can get done with their GP, which we know is always going to come back normal from the GP. And then we'll look at those test results and we narrow the reference ranges down and we you look at them from a functional perspective, suboptimal. What, what are some of those tests that, that you do? Uh, things like liver function testing, uh, electrolytes, thyroid um, testing, um, what else? Blood, uh, blood glucose, um, full blood count, all those kind of things. And we can we'll, we look at those and right from the start we can get an idea about um, just the basics, the signs of, you know, if someone's protein deficient and they're not absorbing protein properly, you can't rebuild and repair the body without basic protein. We said there are 50 to 100 trillion cells in the body, every single one of those cells has a fatty cell membrane, so if you're not absorbing your fats properly, um, your cell membranes, and like that's really important, you know, the cell membranes control some of what goes in and out of the cell, you know, the fundamentals of life, you know, biological life. So must get the fats in. And uh, if you've got all the fats and the proteins they use to rebuild and repair the body, the catalyst for that are your vitamins and minerals. So step one is we just go right basics, get the basics right. 
After that, we go in for targeted organ support. So that's the bit where we go, right, um, where, do they need extra support for thyroid and adrenal? And we'll work specifically. We might work uh, using glandulars, for example, which are actually animal extracts of that particular gland that, that, that have shown to just help to rejuvenate that gland and help help it to um, get back up to optimal functioning. So, so that kind of targeted organ support. Lots of different things we might do with the gut, uh, use a lot of probiotics, hugely important kind of work. Uh, natural antimicrobial um, agents, whether that be herbs, nutritional supplements again. Uh, lots of things we we'll use for antiviral for these low-grade bacterial and viral infections. Um, it's interesting because you, you, we're talking about nutrition and ME and yet you're describing something so much more kind of complex yes. than that. But in some people ways, think, it's yeah, a, nutrition department, it's, it's a bit more than just nutrition. Diet, dietary recommendations is fundamental as well. Um, you know, you can't, it's fundamental to everything we do. You need to get the diet right. It's the foundation of uh, everything else builds on top of having the diet right. Um, one of the, the, mo the biggest thing actually we deal with with diet, apart from if somebody's got chronic allergies and food intolerances going on, then we get very specific about the diet. Um, obviously, we say we look at and say, yeah, there's certain foods you need to uh, either avoid or uh, rotate and so on. But um, in terms of just general guidelines on diet, the things like getting adequate protein in the diet, cutting the sugar out of the diet, the white, ref the normal junk food yeah. stuff, and the white refined carbohydrates. There's a fundamental blood sugar imbalance is really the core thing we deal with with diet and blood sugar imbalances is really just one part of you know blood sugar imbalance is the other bit and adrenals thyroid immune system all these other <laughs> things so but blood sugar is a fundamental start right at the beginning we we tend to fix that and get it sorted right step one and it's interesting you talk about kind of getting adequate protein i think a lot of people become a vegetarian with it yeah. because they think that it's, it's it's healthier for the system what what, what are your views on that yeah the, it's vegetarianism it's people can recover from a can recover from chronic fatigue if they are vegetarian they can um but being vegetarian isn't suited to all people this is just in my our experience our, our opinion and what we've seen from evidence from our own experience and from you know having pa uh, practitioners who've recovered from me themselves in the clinic as well as what we see with patients basically it's coming back to the principle of biochemical individuality we don't think that we we don't see that there's one diet that suits everybody. We haven't seen evidence of that. So we, we do get patients sometimes who come in who are vegetarian and we can tell from their the bloods, the tests they do, also their symptoms of blood sugar imbalances, things like being starving hungry all the time, needing to eat every five minutes, uh, being hungry and even 30 minutes or an hour after a meal, all things like that, which tends to show that there isn't enough protein in the diet for that person. That the same amount of protein might right, work perfectly well for someone else, but isn't working for them. So we look, we look at it very individually. We're not, there's no prescribed like this is the diet for ME patients. That doesn't exist. There is looking at the biochemistry of that individual. And for, there is a lot of protein deficiency going on. More often than not, people need to increase, 80% of the time patients need to increase their protein intake based on looking at their protein levels in testing that we're doing and their symptoms and protein is so it's important for many things any patients need to be able to detoxify properly from they tend to be having a backup of toxins in the system because every all the cells are going more slowly because of the mitochondria and so on so when toxins are released they often attach to protein to help them be taken out of the body so protein is very important for that reason and this control of the blood sugar that's very important as well um, if we're constantly eating high sugar um, meals at points in the day it's causing a fast it causes a, an insulin large amounts of insulin uh, to be produced and insulin is the bit the hormone that's that's taking the sugar out of the blood again and controlling it and bringing it back down but that it's not a good place to be if high, high insulin going on all the time can interfere with the detoxification um, it also the, the, the patient's experience is this roller coaster of of, uh, of energy levels during the day so they're but they might feel great for about an hour after eating and then their energies drop through the floor and then they need to eat again and then they go up again and then th so there's this kind of pattern of going up and down that is usually related with blood sugar imbalances w what we tend to get sorted out for early on is that we want at least the energy to be balanced it may be low because <laughs> we haven't treated the adrenals and the mitochondria but um it we tend to need to get that balanced out and that it's important 
for a lot of patients, carbohydrates and high sugar foods are not a sustainable energy source. They burn that stuff up really quickly. It's a bit like throwing hay at a, a fire. You get a fast <laughs> okay. explosion of energy, but it's gone very quickly. Whereas you want a slow burning log, which is generally the proteins that sustain for longer. And this also leads back to what you were saying right at the start, that there, there isn't any one answer or any one treatment and there's not any one diet that everyone is biochemically individual but 